Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So today what I want to do is answer a few questions regarding copper bearing motors. The first question I had from a viewer was how much copper can you actually get from copper bearing motors? So what I have behind me is actually 42 pounds of copper bearing motors taken from various appliances. I have a ceiling fan, I have a couple portable fans, I have a couple vacuum cleaners, I have a couple from microwaves, uh, the turntable there, um, and the little fan inside of that. So what I'm going to do is I've already separated a number of them. I'm going to weigh the copper separately from the steel core to figure out the difference in profit. The second question I had was the different styles that you come across and how to open those. So I do have a couple that I have left um, unopened, so I'm going to show you how to do that, uh, how I do it to find it, uh, the easiest way in my opinion. There are probably other ways out there. And the third question I had was, are all motors copper? And the answer unfortunately is no. A lot of newer motors especially, manufacturers have replaced the copper with aluminum. So the first thing you have to do before you actually take it apart is do the scratch test. Taking a file, if I scratched the copper and it revealed underneath a metallic look, then that means that they are aluminum windings. And in my opinion, not worth the time taking it apart. I will leave it whole. These ones are all copper. And as you can see, the copper comes in different colors. I got some darker red. I got some nice uh, bare bright look. The nice thing about all of the copper bearing motors is all of this is going to go into my number two copper uh, pile. And that's because the thickness of the wire. All of this motor wire, wire is less than 16 gauge and there is some that are uh, different colors, there's some tape on them and all that, but it is all motor wire going into number two copper. And a nice thing, $4.41 a pound right now in London, Ontario, I just checked, so that is an excellent price. Um, the other thing I do want to take this time to address is I've had one viewer say that they no longer pick up vacuum cleaner motors anymore because he believes that they are all aluminum. And in my opinion, that is not a good thing. I strongly advise you taking them because unfortunately you don't know which ones are copper, which ones are aluminum. Um, it doesn't, uh, it varies sometimes on size, it depends on where they're made. But this is a vacuum cleaner motor in its entirety. And the nice thing about these is even if this was aluminum winding, this is still 100% scrappable. If I pull the top off here, there is some clean aluminum in here. This is going for 45 cents a pound Canadian. It's not a pound, but it definitely adds up. As well, inside of that, there is some a little bit of brass in here, which is going for $3 a pound. And this one, I have already scratched it. These windings are copper, but if this was still aluminum, the nice thing about these is there is still a copper core and these cores are copper. So this right here is still going to go for copper bearing motor price at 10 cents a pound. This is actually two and a half pounds. The rest of this would go into my steel pile um, because aluminum motors aren't worth as much as steel is. So I just throw it off into my steel pile. These are very difficult to take apart. I have seen some people actually uh, put them in the fire and burn off the wax to get to the copper uh, winding there. In my opinion, it's not worth it, especially environmentally. As well, some scrapyards will not take copper if it is burnt. So you definitely don't want to take that chance. So these, in my opinion, are worth just putting into your copper bearing motor pile and getting 10 cents a pound. And they come in different sizes. As you can see, here is a smaller one. Uh, this is about a pound. Um, like I said, different sizes, all copper inside of that. So copper bearing motors here. As well, some of your motors, as you can see here, these came out of, this came out of a fan. Um, and there is a little bit of uh, cast aluminum around this, but because it has steel mixed in with it, it's gonna be dirty cast, which is five cents a pound. So you're better off taking this, putting it into your steel. And you also wanna check sometimes the little bearing in here. I have one that I've taken out of a larger fan, but as you can see, this bearing, I've scratched it. 
Hopefully you can see it in the light. This is actually copper. And for this experiment, I am not using this. This is about three and a half ounces. So they do add up, which is nice, um, but I am not putting this in the experiment. So you do want to check for those. The rest of this core is going to go into steel. Uh, as well, one thing I do also want to address is my ceiling fans, as you can see. This ceiling fan does have a nice ring of cast aluminum around it, but unfortunately, there is also going to be a magnet in here, so this is better off just putting it into my tin shred or steel pile for 10 to 13 cents a pound, and this is significantly heavy. So, the styles of motors you're gonna find are, some of them will have two windings of copper, some of them will have a large ring of copper around it. They're very easy to take apart. Um, this is one of your motors from a microwave. Um, for me, the nicest thing is you can use a pair of tin snips to cut around this. It is easy to do, um, or a pair of um, uh, heavy duty pliers that I have here. I do like using a grinder at times to speed up the process. And something like this, all I've done is actually used a uh, grinder and put two incisions, one there, one there. And I'm just gonna actually flip this over and I'm gonna let science do its work using leverage. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Uh, some people don't like using a grinder because it does leave a little bit of copper dust. And for me, when I do that, I will always put something underneath it to catch that copper dust and still put it into my number two pile. So that's really good. Um, but as you can see, I'm just gonna hopefully put this in securely. Unfortunately, these ones like to slip out a little bit. I gotta make sure I loosen the windings. But the nice thing is, is using leverage. I'm gonna just take a pair of pliers here. Hopefully just work that out. Slipping out because it's kind of fragile. It comes in plates. But as you can see there, really nice coil. Look at that copper. Again, it's all going to be number two. Doesn't matter what the look is. I am also going to break this plastic. Just so it's easier to get at. Um, and then I'm just going to, as I said, put a pair of pliers underneath. Make sure that my copper is coming out. Got to slide it under the copper. Just loosening it. As you can see, just using leverage. Pulling it up. Again, this, these ones are a little bit tricky, but again, just to turn it. There we go. It's gonna slide out now. You do also wanna make sure that your windings, as you can see, this is a little bent, so it kind of slows it down. But just turn it. There we go. Pull it out of there. So the rest of this, once I get this last little piece out, this is going to go into my steel pile. I, I do have to make sure I take the plastic off. So I'm just going to cut that little piece here. Again, there's some more. Uh, and as I said before, the copper does come in different colors, which is nice. Um, this is from your microwave. All I do with this one is I will actually just put it into my vise. I will hit it with a hammer, just as you can see there, hopefully. There you go, comes out. The nice thing about this is there is still some steel in this. Gonna just pop the top off of this. Make sure I get all of the sides. There we go. And this is just gonna fold out. So again, this does look like bare bright, very nice shiny, but scrap yards look at thickness of wire. So this is still number two copper, but look how beautiful that is. I have seen some people melt it down into ingots. I would love to get into that. That's my upcoming future plans is getting a crucible. Unfortunately though, you do have to check with your scrap yards. Some scrap yards will not take uh, melted copper because 
of some think of impurities, um, but uh, definitely, like I said, check. But I think I'm going to do it just out of um, entertainment and joy. Another type is your microwave uh, rotating plate. This is a small motor, but very easy to open, just taking a hammer. As you can see, the, pop, the cap pops off. Just gonna open it up with a screwdriver. So here's some more tin shred. A few gears in here, I'm just gonna empty those out. Okay, and there's another plate underneath this. So I'm just gonna grab that plate. I'm just gonna pull it. There we go. So pull that plate up. Okay, I'm gonna hopefully grab it. Okay, there we go. Get that plate underneath. Gotta get that screwdriver under there. There we go. So, as you can see here, another nice piece of tin shred. There is going to be a nice copper spool in there as well. Just gonna quickly cut that off. There you go. Just gonna also speed it up, just cut it in half. Okay, again, because it's number two, scrap yards are not gonna say anything about a little bit of tape on here. Um, so there, make sure this is really the only garbage that I have. Uh, there is a little bit of brass, those prongs I will take off and put into my brass pile. Um, but there you go, another little bit of copper. The last style that I have is one of the ones that goes uh, around. And all I'm actually gonna do for this one is take an angle grinder. I'm just gonna grind around one side. And as you can see, I'm gonna get a disc like this. And then afterwards, I'm gonna use a punch and pop it through. So for this one, I do wanna make sure I put on a glove. There might be a little bit of copper dust, as I said, so that is where I will use this. I'll use my grinder. my copper as you can see there are a couple pieces here you could hear them dropping onto this container so all I do is like I said is it's gonna spill it into there don't lose anything the rest of this what I'm gonna do is actually I should also mention from that motor there are little pieces of copper on here and I do take these off as well so all I'm gonna do is actually just pinch it with a pair of snippers, as you can see. Cut that. I'm gonna cut this one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it. Make sure I cut both of them. As you can see, here is a little bit of copper as well. It doesn't look like a lot, but it all adds up. Okay, and there are gonna be two pieces from both sides. As you can see, there's another nice piece of copper. Okay, and the rest of this actually, if I just fed it through, which I should be able to do, once I grab it with a pair of pliers instead of cutters, but it will slide through, as you can see, pull that up. There you go, there it is. So I would get all that copper as well. It all adds up. And the rest of this is gonna go into tin shred. The last part of this motor, now that I have one side done, I'm actually just gonna put it back into my vise. And I've seen people use different things for this. For me, this is the best way. Uh, I will now just take a pair of my hammer and where is my there it is just going to use a type of punch as you can see I start working at different coils 
And most of it is just going to slide out ever so easily. Patience. This for me is very therapeutic. There you go. So, there is my copper. It's just going to slide out the rest of it. Beautiful. Now, the nice thing is, is there are going to be a couple of these little plastic things. These I will take off, but I do not take off the tape. You do want to make sure you take off any wire on here. That you definitely have to make sure you do because if you don't take off the wire, they may say that it is, you know, copper wire. Um, you know, sometimes they want an excuse, depending on your scrapyards, to give you less of a profit. So you do have to be careful on that. But I will remove that wire. There we go. The rest of this is going to be nice, clean copper. So, moment of truth. Here we go. I'm going to first weigh my tin shred. Here is my scale. So I have, as I said, tin shred is also going for 10 cents a pound. I had 42 pounds to begin with. All of these, these are fan covers. Make sure I get all of my tin shred in here. I also want to make sure when I do this, I also include my screws that I have from the fan because the screws also will count. And I have right here 32 pounds of steel. So we'll see what happens there. That's 32 pounds. Now, what I want to do for this one, because I have less copper, obviously it's not going to weigh the same. Hopefully that means I should have around 10 pounds. We'll see what happens, give or take. Make sure I scale this, set it at zero. So here we go. I already have three pounds there. Five, six. Eight. I have eight pounds, 10 ounces of number two copper. So going from $4.20 a pound, I just made $4.41 times eight and three quarter pounds. So a well worth your time and energy profit, um, uh, which is awesome here maximizing your profit as well. I still have $3, I said, what, 31 pounds? $3.10 worth of steel here. So great payoff, well worth your time, uh, very easy to do. Hopefully uh, this was informative. Hopefully you learned a couple of tricks here. As I said, make sure if you do use a grinder, put something underneath it to catch the last bit of dust. It is a great time to get that copper um, and definitely copper bearing motors a great way to maximize your profit taking out that number two copper again hope you enjoyed the video please comment down below like share subscribe want to wish all of my viewers a very happy christmas and new year hopefully this year brings you lots of peace joy and happiness thank you again for watching tin man out